use a trim tool, go ahead and pop off our center cap, set that aside. Let's get to remove our lug nuts using our 19 millimeter socket. Get to remove the wheel, set it aside. On our upper ball joint here, there's gonna be a cotter pin that goes through the castle nut and comes through the other side. You wanna go ahead and bend over the tabs on the other side and see if we can get that cotter pin out and then we'll remove that nut. Now on the back side is the cotter pin here. We're gonna go ahead and try and pry that down a little bit. Try and grab it with our needle nose pliers and kind of straighten it out a little bit. And if we can, we're going to try and work the whole cotter pin out through the other side. So our cotter pin was pretty much rotted really bad. There was nothing left for us to really capture with any type of tool. So we're gonna put our wrench on there. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this nut and pull that right off. Now at this point here, you wanna have your vehicle supported on jack stands. We're gonna go ahead and put a jack underneath the control arm. We're not going to lift the vehicle. We're simply going to support the control arm here. Next, we're going to use our 22 millimeter socket and swivel, and we're going to go ahead and put it on the upper ball joint nut here and remove that nut. Now I want to go ahead and separate our upper control arm ball joint from the knuckle. We're going to use what we call a pickle fork and hammer this in and try and separate that. At this point here, in your case, you'd probably want to slowly lower your jack. We're going to go ahead and raise our vehicle off of our jack. With our jack removed, we're going to go ahead and get this back to a operating height. Before we completely remove our jack, we wanna go ahead and make sure that our flex hose here has a little bit of slack in it. We're gonna go ahead and jack this back up just enough where there's some flex in that flex hose. We don't want all kinds of weight on that, but yet we wanna make sure we have the ability to work on our upper control arm. We're gonna go ahead and tuck our mats up in the side. Now using our 1516 socket on our ratchet, we're gonna go ahead and loosen the nut on each side of our control arm here. Do the same for the other side.
Now we're going to go ahead and use a ratchet strap here. This is going to support our low control arm and steering knuckle. It's going to take any pressure off of the brake caliper flex hose here. All right, using an 18 millimeter wrench, we're going to go ahead and put it on our nut here. Oops. I'm just going to keep working at this here and get that nut removed completely. On the front bolt, we're able to fit an 18 millimeter socket with our ratchet to go ahead and break this free. Now that it's free, I'm gonna try going back to our gear wrench and continue to remove that. Now on the other side of that nut is this bolt here and there was a retaining tab right here that normally locks it bolt into place. Ours kind of bent up a little bit as we try to remove it. What we're going to do is use our pry bar, just pop it off the rest of the way. That's going to allow us to actually get a socket on the outside here with our impact. We'll put a wrench on the other side and we'll just zip that bolt out. So we have a wrench on the back side and use our 20 millimeter swivel socket here. And go ahead and zip this bolt out. All right, so we have that nut off. We're gonna go ahead and try and work this bolt out right here. Here is that bolt. One over to the other side here. And we can go ahead and pull the control arm up and out like so. Now there are shims here that are used for alignment purposes. These go between the steel plate here and the control arm. These help with the alignment. There's gonna be a set on the other side as well. We wanna be sure that you put these back in when we reassemble. I'm just gonna set them right here. I wanna go ahead and remove the nuts off each end of the pivot shaft here. We're gonna use our 15 16 Now this bushing right here needs to come out this way here, as well as the other side bushing needs to come out the opposite side in order for us to get our center pivot shaft out. We're gonna use our air chisel and we're gonna go ahead and try and recess the side of this here, break some of that rust free. And then we're gonna try and work this out.
Now on this side of our shaft, once we remove those bushings, this side has a washer, the other side did not. I'm simply going to mark the control arm with a W. That way there, when we reinstall this here, this side here gets the washer. I'm gonna go ahead and take your new bushings. Go ahead and line these up. Install a washer. I'm going to put our nut on. We're going to zip it down. We're not going to make it super tight, but we want to make it snug. We want to make sure that we can keep pivoting our uh, our spindle here. That way we can get our bolts on, get those tightened down, and then we'll torque these down. Now when we initially removed the control arm, we had to cut off what was left of the cotter pin because it was rusted. We have some remnants of the cotter pin still in this here. We want to go ahead and remove this. We can use a small pin punch to go ahead and pop that out. That way there when we assemble this, we can install a new cotter pin. and we'll go ahead and these are two pieces of the cotter pin that was stuck in there as you can use our pick just kind of run that through ready for installation Let's go ahead and get our control arm pushed back here. You want to make sure that your shims are in place for that back bolt there. Pull that up. You want to go ahead and take our front bolt. Watch for our shims. I'm going to do is start to put the bolt in. I'm going to put the shims in over. Go ahead and get that bolt put through. With that bolt through, we're going to, to drop our shims down on top. Then I'm going to reach around and over and get that nut started on the other side. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put our 18 millimeter wrench on the back side over here. I'm going to go ahead and lift up on this here. I'm going to go ahead and tighten up that bolt here. Now on the back bolt here, we're simply going to go ahead and reach around and go ahead and get that nut started. We're going to go back up top and tighten that nut down with our gear wrench. Now at this point here, while we're tightening up 
the nut here, you can see that the shims are still in place, which is a good thing. Make sure you don't tighten these down without having those shims in place. Even though we are installing everything the way it was before, once this is all done, you want to go ahead and bring the vehicle down and get an alignment done. So the nuts and bolts holding the pivot arm on your control arm, we just want to go ahead and tighten these down pretty tight. There are no bushings here. It's metal to metal, so you want to just make sure that these are really tight. And go ahead and repeat for the other bolt. All right, we'll go ahead and tighten this one down here. So we're gonna go ahead and use our jack under our control arm. We're gonna lift this up. Now our upper control arm is loose. Lower control arm with our knuckle is coming up. And we wanna just get this to the point where we can release our strap here that's supporting this. Get this disconnected. pull up the knuckle, get that lined up with our ball joint. Tuck that down inside. We're gonna reach around the back side here and just get that ball joint nut started a few threads. On the back side, let's go ahead and get the nut started here. I'm going to go ahead and use our wrench here and we're going to go ahead and snug this down. So we're switching over to our 22 millimeter socket and ratchet. Go ahead and speed up the tightening process here. Go ahead and torque down the ball joint here to 17 foot pounds. Now, once it's torqued, we want to go ahead and pay attention to the notch in our castle nut here. There's going to be a hole in our ball joint stud there. So, what we need to do now is put a cotter pin through the castle nut through the ball joint stud and out the other side. Now, if it doesn't line up, what you wanna do is continue to tighten the nut until the next opening on the castle nut uh, gives you the option to fit that cotter pin in and through the ball joint stud. So we're able to go ahead and line up the notch with our stud and we can go ahead and fit that cotter pin in. Just gonna go ahead and push that through. Once that cotter pin comes through like that, go ahead and grab your pliers. And go ahead and bend over the tab.
So we're gonna go ahead and bend our tab over here. Press that up. Then I'm just gonna reach in there with our cutters and cut off the excess. Now at this point here, once we have our cotter pin in and our nut on, we wanna go ahead and raise up our suspension into its full compressed position. And then we're gonna go ahead and torque down our upper control arm bushings. We want these bushings to be torqued at the original ride height. We don't wanna torque these here with the suspension completely drooped because that's gonna cause an issue with the resistance on these bushings uh, and can actually uh, mess up alignment, uh, things like that. So let's go ahead and use our jack this point here we're going to put under the control arm and jack this up we want to make sure that our weight is on the vehicle maybe jounce it a little bit now we can go ahead and torque down our nuts for the uh, pivot shaft bushings let's get and torque down the nut here to 85 foot pounds Once this is torqued, let's go ahead and repeat for the back nut. Let's go ahead and lower our jack. Remove that from underneath the vehicle. Just go ahead and get your wheel installed. Let's get all of our lug nuts all started by hand first. I like to thread them down as far as I can. Spin them on by hand, get all those on, and then we'll go ahead and tighten them down. Good. torque our lug nuts down to 95 foot pounds. Install your shunning cap by lining up the ports here with the lug nuts and press it on. Don't forget after you perform this job you want to go ahead and get your alignment done.